I have always been obsessed with naming things. If I could name them, I could know them. If I could name them, I could tame them. They could be my friends. For example, I had a large collection of frogs when I was a little girl. Stuffed frogs, china frogs, plastic frogs, neon frogs, happy battery-operated frogs. <laughs> Each one had a name. I took the time to get to know them before I named them. I sat on my bed and I would watch them in daylight, wear them in my coat pocket, hold them in my sweaty little hands. I came to know them by their texture, their smell, their shape, their size, their sense of humor. Then they would get named, usually in a splendid naming ceremony. Surrounding them with their frog friends, I would dress them in ceremonial coats, put sparkles on them or gold stars, stand them in front of the body chapel, <coughs> and name them. First, I would whisper the coveted name into their ear. You are my froggy doodle, Nash and Pie. <laughs> I would make sure the frog accepted the name. <laughs> then, I would repeat it out loud for the other excited frogs, some of whom were waiting for their own names. <coughs> Froggy Doodle Mashy Pie! <laughs> there would be singing, usually the frog's name repeated over and over, joined by the other frogs. Froggy Doodle Mashy Pie! Froggy Doodle Mashy Pie! <laughs> this would happen with dancing. I'd line the frogs up and I'd dance in and out of them, hopping like a frog and making general frog voices, all the while holding the newly christened frog in my hands or arms, depending on the size. It was an exhausting ceremony, but crucial. It would have been fine if it had been limited to frogs. <laughs> but soon, I needed to name everything. I named rugs and doors and chairs and stairs. Ben, for example, was my flashlight, named after my kindergarten teacher, who was always in my business. <laughs> I eventually named all the parts of my body. My hands, Gladys. They seemed functional and basic, like Gladys. I named my shoulders, Shorty, Strong, and a little belligerent. My breasts were thin. They weren't Veronica, but they weren't ugly either. Naming my down there, was not so easy. It wasn't the same as naming my hands. No, it was complicated. Down there was a lot, not so easy to pinpoint. It remained unnamed. And as unnamed, it was untamed, unknown. We had a babysitter around then, Sarah Stanley. She talked in this high-pitched voice that made me pee. <laughs> One night when I was taking a bath, she told me to be sure to wash my itsy bitsy. Uh, I wasn't sure what I thought of this name. It took me a while to even figure out what it was. But there was something about her voice. The name stuck. <laughs> yep, there it is, my itsy bitsy. <laughs> Unfortunately, this name followed me into adulthood. On our first night in bed, I informed the man that I would later marry that Itsy Bitsy was a little shy, but eager. If he would only be patient, she would surely reveal her mysteries. He was a bit freaked out, I think. But as is his nature, he went along with it, and later he would actually call her by name. Is Itsy Bitsy there? <laughs> I myself was never happy with a name, so what happened later isn't such a surprise. We were in the act, my husband and I, when he called out to her. I'm here, my little Itsy Bitsy. And she did not respond. <laughs> Itsy Bitsy, it's me, I'm just a fan. <laughs> No word. No motion. So I try. Itsy Bitsy, come on out. <laughs> Don't do this to me. No word. No sound. Itsy was dead and mute and gone. 